going to do this as quick as possible. First, shout outs. Joker Josh, who was always holding it down oh, across the pond. 97 tweets about a shout out. He was like, motherfuckers, <laughs> if you guys don't shout me out, I'm going to fucking get on a boat, row that motherfucker across the Atlantic Ocean, well, and fuck you guys up. That'll take him three or four years to get here, so you yeah, should be so all right. So we'd probably be all right. Now, other shout out. Ryan Close. Your boy Ryan My Close. My bad. Now, what we need you guys to do, everybody's been asking about the MMA fantasy. The first thing that you have to do is you've got to go to Facebook. You want to go to our main page on YouTube. Click the Facebook button. Join our Facebook page. Then they're going to have to – that's where they find out all the information. Then you want to go to www.pickthefights.com and sign up. Mm-hmm. You will find all the sign-up information on our Facebook page, okay? Mm-hmm. Our good friends over at PickTheFights.com are hooking us the fuck up. But you know where they're running that business out of? Where are they running out of? Utah. There you go. Our boys from Utah. Now. Well, I know I'm for, on that site, so. You are on this site? Yeah, you can definitely compete against me. I, and I saw George is there, too. Because you're out of fantasy football. Oh, yeah, dude. I didn't even check the lineup. So. And in the other league, me and George were still hanging top shorty. Although, mm. I'm getting ready to get eliminated. Yeah, well. Now, um, I just wanted to let you know, if you click on the link above, that will take you to the Christmas story. I heard that shit is doo-doo. It is doo-doo, man. But you know what? You guys are going to have to go yourself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you guys are going to have to go yourself <laughs> and see the Christmas story. And if you haven't had a chance to see Kevin White Uncut, you got to go there. Jimmy will not go there. Because that mug is not trying to do anything except grow hair. And, <laughs> and you know what? I've been trying like a bitch. And, and just and like the work. Christmas story is doo doo, so it's the top of Jimmy's head. So, yeah. anyway, <laughs> I am wow. going to let George take over because we just witnessed the Strike Force card. <laughs> and uh, George has really been just trying to contain himself. Well, why don't you ask him, Kevin, about certain aspects of the card? Yeah, uh, George. Well, what did you think about the overall, about the Strike Force? The what experience. What bothered you about the Strike Force experience? Yeah, Jimmy put it best. I am not knocking one individual, male or female, who fought tonight. I am knocking that god awful, atrocious abomination of a fucking color commentary abomination. team they had. That was the most ridiculous, <laughs> useless waste of fucking time, space, I- and human sperm I've ever seen. Those three dudes together shouldn't be allowed to do any fucking thing, especially not in front of a microphone. In between the fourth and fifth round of the Gilbert Melendez fight, Dead not one air. word was said by any of those no, three. And if I had to hear one more motherfucker go, Pat, what do you think? You know what? Like, Take that weekend up. at Bernie's what? motherfucker and shoot him in the face. You might have been great in 46 when you were wrestling polar bears out there in Croatia. Motherfucker, step away from the microphone Croatia. and stop. Yeah, the Croatian sensation. He is not sensational anywhere near a microphone. Not, not a Obviously, microphone. his shit was shaped like a penis, and he was scared to death of it because he didn't get his mouth anywhere near that motherfucker. I, I mean, Why just, were they silent for so long? Because they never said nothing so in between rounds. Nothing. It was uh, so much dead and, and air. You know what I said to That's George? Could you imagine if these guys were doing radio? They'd be it, fired. It, it would oh, be my fire. God. It would be like a silent movie. I mean, it was bad enough that we movie. could at least watch it. I'm not, and here's the thing. You folks who are here to watch the fight, this is the time to click off. But for the rest of you who have watched us and understand, Kevin and I could have done a much better job oh, sitting next to Morello yeah. than and those Jimmy. two clowns. Yeah, and Fra- I mean, and Frank, Frank Shamrock Frank? was oh. doing the best he could. Right. But even he'd have to be like, Pat. Yeah. Pat, Pat's like, they were mm-hmm. all literally calling out. Mm-hmm. Her name's Anadrol. <laughs> <laughs> I took that back in 88. Yeah. <laughs> Anadrol. <laughs> you could not. What? You yeah. couldn't even understand what he was saying. Yeah. That's the worst part. His he fucking would just mumble he, a bunch of shit like he had marbles in his throat. Mouth. That motherfucker's been chewing on rocks. So his teeth are like, you know, I think everybody who did not get to see the strike didn't force miss fight shit. and did not get to experience, we're going to relive it. I'm going to be, we're all going to play for it. You're going to obviously play Pat because you are just really good. What? Okay. I'm gonna, who's the bar to do with the fucking That's Morrow. 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 I'm yeah, Morrow. Morrow, Morello. Well. Happy holidays, everyone! And, uh, Pat! What? Hmm? Pat, what, what, what did you think about that? Uh, what about the punch stat? Uh, uh, did anyone see the inner draw girl? <laughs> she's under the table giving you a blow. That's job. great! Hold on. In between. That's what all looks like. She's taking a lot of punishment out there. Oh, yeah. Happy holidays, everybody! It's in between rounds. Pat! Shh, no, in between rounds, we don't talk. That's the bell. Oh, yeah, there we go. I mean, <laughs> people, I'm, I'm sorry. And normally we don't talk about commentating. Right. And I didn't I, think commentating make that much of a difference. But let me tell you right now, give me Gus Johnson. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> Who's the ice maker? Dude, give me the Gus jo- give me Gus Johnson in fucking two Polynesian midgets with box cutters and a fucking one terrorist from that. Polynesian court. midgets. Uh, I think we saw fuckers. those. Those were in Musasi's corner. Musasi. Oh, because he wasn't. Now let's yeah. let's talk about the fights. The fight. Okay. The night started off with KJ Noons versus Billy Evangelista. And, right, dude. First round went to Billy because Billy was active. After yes. that, Billy decided well, I'm gonna stop throwing punches and let KJ Noons I, punch me. I was just gonna say what Kevin I think highlighted the fight for me in a nutshell was did KJ. Tr- did KJ train? He just, you know what? KJ Noons had every. It was a good fight. I mean, no, should no, I, no, he looked, not. He he looked, was it not wasn't a good a, fight. It wasn't. Yeah, it was. It just got sloppy. It's not which the case. You very don't sloppy. Typically, see guys that light. Well, it's typically you. You two well, like yeah, the sloppy. Yeah, but we like the but slobber see, knockers when the guys can actually. <laughs> no, no, slobber <laughs> knockers. Look out! We. I, I know. A, I know a woman in Goshen named Slobber Knocker. Slobber knockers, man. She's a roll. But anyway, um. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, I've had way too shit. much Mountain Dew. Um, but anyway, KJ KJ Noons did not look like the KJ Noons that we just watched he in just the past. He just looked exhausted he was by the second round, and he didn't have enough energy to put away Evangelista. Dude, he now, couldn't hit the Billy thing hard Jimmy enough. And I like is that we like the guys when the big heavyweights are swinging for the fences. Right. Someone gets caught in a right. snoring. These guys are lightweights. You never see them run out of energy, and this you, they both ran out of fuel. At one point, I think Billy was giggling at KJ, going, ha, ha, ha. Well, yeah, because he thought he had no power. Yeah. He, he didn't. didn't. <laughs> yeah, he's just like, whatever, so, hit me if you want, because anyway, it's not going to do shit. That fight was like terrible. Fly swatter. Now, on to Jimmy's other favorite fighter, Gegard Musasi Versus OSP. O- yeah, OSP. Uh, and that's where it's going to stand, OSP, because Oven I'm going to tell you Perot? what right now. There's a million dollars on the table. Uh, George, can you say the name cor- correctly? Oven St. Perot. Oh, shit, you might have hit that shit. It's close enough. Sorry, but you're not getting a million dollars. Oh, OSP. Yeah. But I, I'll, oh. I'll, I'll, I would just say I like Gegard Musasi, but he was definitely not on his game. He said he was sick. I mean, I'm hoping that it was I the flu. I think he's sick because, of fighting. <laughs> yeah. Because he, he looked like shit. We said that when we when we, when we, we Yes. We, when we were he's talking about the he's fight. got a gaudy record. I mean, I think now he's 31 or 32 and 3, but, you know. Could you please go a little bit further and describe a gaudy record? Uh, in other words, he's been in Japan beating up fucking crap. <laughs> no, I'm not even kidding. That's right. the knock on this guy. Right. Yeah. All of his wins come in Japan. Yeah. Right. He, he fought he, he fought King Mo Law, and let's face it, King Mo Law is about as one his, dimensional his game's as Rampage still developing. and fucking yeah. Dan Henderson. He, he he shoots in and wrestles you to the ground on a little G&P. And he, he destroyed didn't do much Gegard. He, he wrecked right. Yeah, he wrecked him. I mean, uh, it was uneventful. No, we no. Just move on because now. the next thing was the complete opposite. And it lasted 15 seconds. Yeah, it was the yeah. highlight of the night. I, I was even shocked at how quickly it ended. I thought it was at least going to be a minute or so. I think the highlight of that fight wow. was finding out that that tall Japanese woman is a dominatrix, and she thought getting in the MMA would help her in her career. So my immediate idea was cut it over to Pat. Well, who doesn't want to be bent over a five foot ten Japanese woman dressed up in a diaper and get spanked? You ever had your dick stepped on with a fucking stiletto? No. Why? Where's Where's Andrew? Happy holidays. Where's Andrew? <laughs> yeah. <it> was- uh- <laughs> And that I mean, right there, that whole dialogue was longer than the entire fight. Right. And now go quiet. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I, the one thing, the one thing. Pat! <laughs> yeah. The one thing I did point out at the end of the fight, oh. Christine Cyborg beat this girl in 16 seconds. Oh, my seconds. God. It she was, did. It could have actually been stopped yeah. sooner. It she la- she really. landed 15 power punches. Yeah. But the one thing I did notice is now Christine Christine Cyborg is now residing out of San Jose. Yeah. And I it's scary San enough. San Diego. Same difference. Mm-hmm. Actually, there's I don't hundreds give a of shit. miles of difference. Yeah. But Whatever. Anyway. Not to be mistaken for San Padre. She's living in California. Or San Francisco. Good. <laughs> Southern um, California. What I'm thinking is, is this is going to give her an opportunity to train with much better people. And she could get that much better. Yeah. Not that I, there's anyone to fight at 145 yeah, for her, but mm. I, I don't. It was funny because I was like, wow. We all said she looked in the 16 seconds that we saw her a little bit more technical. Now, what ba- saying that we meant she just looked more accurate. Yeah. Now, yeah, it could have said she could have looked more accurate because the girl wasn't really moving her head a lot. She did. She, she moved that shit chance. straight to the mat. Huh? I mean, she didn't have a chance. And you know what? I'd like to know where the three phantom punches that she threw were. She landed one of them. Yeah. I think it was stop. <laughs> Don't hit me again. You yeah, know. That, I mean, that. all I saw was bell rang, and then she got her and bell then rung. She got her bell rung and went to the mat immediately. Yeah. I'm surprised the girl didn't After tap four out. Four seconds. Yeah. Now can we have a moment of silence? Are we in between fights? We're in between rounds. We're the end of Pat. Yeah. I'm, what? Hmm? Happy holidays! <laughs> so anyway, I'm right, bring now, Gus Johnson back now, ASAP, yeah, please. Okay. Now on to the fight. We all tuned in to watch. Um, 
was the lightweight championship bout. And the fight was light in the ass. And <laughs> when the fight ended, I pretty much called what the score should have been, 49-46. Right. I had Masvidal winning the fourth. Yeah. Yeah. And shocker, John McCarthy is now a judge. And guess who, in my opinion, got the score right? John McCarthy. John McCarthy. While Cecil People somehow <laughs> had it 50-45. to 45. What were you doing in the fourth round? Cecil. Nothing, just like Gilbert. Dilated people cannot call. For, we know doing the exact determined. same thing Pat was. Huh? He is horrible. Just listening. Just listening. Dude, the only person... That was fucking happier to see mm-hmm. uh, Cecil Peoples there was Andre Ward because he was like, "Cool, if Cecil Peoples is not at my event. <laughs> yeah. I got a chance to win this shit." Right, exactly, because that guy's just like this. I, Cecil Peoples is horrible. How did this guy get a job? Anyway, I, I don't know. Gilbert Melendez, but he pretty does much- have a fucking UFC figure, doesn't he? He what? Yeah. He has a figure. What? He has a UFC oh. figure. It's a mole rat with a fucking cane and like one of the three blind mice. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker couldn't find his ass piano, with both like hands. Ray Charles and Stevie yeah. Wonder. He's, He's a, terrible. He, he was a ref for a while. That yeah. didn't work out too well. No, it didn't. So now with Gilbert Melendez winning this fight, mm-hmm. a UD mm-hmm. all the way across, mm-hmm. was it impressive enough to get moved eventually to the UFC because Dana White said no one's moving to the UFC. Strike force fighters are staying put. We're abolishing your heavyweight class. Well so this is the thing that I I I I, I noticed tonight with this fight. In, in my opinion, Gilbert Melendez is an exceptional fighter. He's the champion. He is nice. But when I look at the top three, <laughs> top two guys over in the UFC, no. Really? I I, I and why I say this is because Got no power. He didn't have a lot of power to put away Masvidal. And maybe it's because Masvidal has a great chin. But when you have so- – he got hit a lot. Jeez. I, he got hit a lot. And Frankie Ecker can really lay it on you. We all know right. that. He's got a hell of a fucking chin. And it takes a lot to put Frankie Ecker away because Gray Maynard would be the first person to tell you that. Ben Henderson is slippery as they come. That guy can take you down. I, I, can, I know he could take Melendez down. He's powerful. He's got kicks. I, they just look like much quicker, more accurate fighters that are more on the attack. And this guy, Jorge, Jorge Masvidal, looked good. But I'm going to tell you what, he hit Gilbert Melendez a lot. And Masvidal, I mean, as of late, has had a great record. But he's had a lot of losses in his well, career, too. Let me ask you a quick question. If I throw a punch and you block it, does that count as a miss or does that count as a landed punch? Does a punch have to land flush? It's no, a pu- pu- I mean, like, I mean, if you block it, it's it's a thrown punch, or you know. But does it count as a hit, like a landed no, punch? I mean, like what counts as a landed punch? No, like it has to be blocked. No. Okay. Yeah. If I hit you like this, it'd be a landed punch. If I, you block it and prevent me from hitting your body, I mean, if you're blocking with your arm, now it's not a landed punch. Okay. It's a thrown Cause, punch. Because I was I was surprised at how many. I mean, Gilbert Melendez threw a substantial amount of more punches, but and surprisingly, they landed the same percentage. Right. Well, because Jorge's me, defense was excellent up top. I mean, right. I don't yeah. think Gilbert got through a lot. And the thing was, with Masvidal was he just didn't let go. He would right. throw a couple good jabs and actually. You know, it, it would hit Gilbert, but then he wasn't throwing the power punches. He, yeah, I mean, he didn't Gilbert follow threw up. a ton of power punches yeah, and landed like a, a fifty ton. something to eight at one point. Yeah, I think that's yeah. the only thing constructive Pat Militich said in fucking four <laughs> hours tonight. Rotten fuck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just <laughs> no. What do you, I'm what you, honestly, what do you guys think Dana thought of that production, Dana White? I mean, because now truly, you know, that's a reflection on the UFC. Uh, he, well, I mean, I think I, eight, I think it needs to change. Dude, I mean, if they got eight more events. He's he's got to get this They have to have definitely Gus Johnson or bring in somebody like. Like a Frank Mir, Kenny Florian, somebody has to well, come the in there. The problem was is that I think they would have had Gus Johnson and had the regular crew in there, except right. they were t- they're they're on the contract with Showtime, and right, show, they had a, a a large event. You know. Anyway, um, we're going to get back we're to MMA, but we're going to talk about ball. Chris Paul is now a Clipper. He's Finally, in Los Angeles. Your thoughts on He's in Los Angeles, but he's not with the L.A. Lakers. Um, a lot of people were happy about it. A lot of people were sad about it. A lot they of people were mad a, about it. They gave up a lot. They gave up a lot. Now, let's talk about the Clippers because they gave up a lot to get Chris Paul. And, you know, a lot of NBA players have come out and said, you know, they, the Clippers didn't win a lot of games last year, and we're not really impressed. I mean, they added Karan Butler. But the thing is, is that the Clippers are about four Point guards deep. They <laughs> went out and got Chris Paul. They got Chauncey Billups. Okay. They have Mo Williams and they have another point guard. Now, well, let me their starting you, lineup. Let me. Let me whoa, 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 whoa. Mm-hmm. My experience of watching Mo Williams, don't worry, because around playoff times, oh, he'll, he'll disappear. Yeah, right. So you might as well cut That's him. David Copperfield. Yeah, right. just cut yeah. him around playoff time because mm-hmm. he will do zippy in the right. playoffs. Um, I think the Clippers are going to struggle. 
Uh, and, and the reason I say that is because it's, the West is so strong. It's so yeah. strong. You're, they gave up Chris Klan, their big man. Right. Well, I, I don't think you need me personally. I don't think you need a big man to win in the NBA. I don't think you need a seven footer down low to win a championship. I really don't. See, I think you do. I think if you look at the past, I look if you think if you go back and look at all the champions, they've all had seven footers. I mean, you look at the Celtics, the Lakers, the Spurs, they've all had big men that have been dominant. I mean, even the teams that have gone in the championship well, a bit had all had I mean, big to me, you, you definitely need a body that's going to do some rebounding and do some yeah. dirty work. I mean, you yeah. look at even Blake the Lakers, Griffin. the reason that they had a problem was because Paul Gasol was not that guy. So. Well, the problem is with the Clippers, too. They're just not a defensive team. Paul Griffin. Right. I mean, he, Paul Griffin. I mean, Paul Griffin. I mean, Blake Who Griffin is not Paul Griffin. Be, he is an offensive player. You know, right. I mean, you know, he's not a. Put, put, put it this way. The Clippers, by getting Paul, they just sold out for the season. They really they, did. And, and that's what they need. And they, they need money. They need money. <laughs> and the problem line is, is this. Chauncey Billups is going to be playing a shooting guard. What's his name? Chauncey. Yeah. Chauncey's going to be a shooting guard. Come on, man. We all know Chauncey goes down the court and establishes everything right. and gets everybody where they need to be. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to have Paul doing that because he's the better pouring guard at this point in time of his career. But Chauncey Billups is going to be a shooting guard? Yeah, he's not exactly he's a shooter. He's going to take the role of like a Kobe Bryant? There's a lot of crickets right now in the studio. Anyway, unfortunately, a routine physical administered by the Boston mm. Celtics found out that Jeff Green, who just signed a one-year, $9 million contract with the Celtics wow. last week. Sorry about your luck, Chuck. Detected aortic aneurysm. So he has to have surgery, and he will be out for a year. Now, moving on to the NFL. No, um, that's not what it says. It says, oh, wow, 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 wow. NFL. Whoa. Yeah. Um, that was a misprint by me. Kevin's big ass caveman fingers league. just went blur. Let's go over the ballistics oh. and the NFC real The quick. ballistics? Yeah. The Packers are just running oh, away with that's everything. A wrap. They're already the NFC North champ. Um, they're 13 and 0. Uh, they look like they could run the table. San Fran's a wrap. San Francisco is basically the champs in the West. Um, they win the tiebreaker over New Orleans. If New they Orleans. Did. New Orleans um, with the because they've got better win in uh, conference games. Now, uh, the New Orleans is the NFC South champ. So you've almost got everybody um, lined up except for the NFC East. you got the Giants and the, and, and, and the Cowboys That's battling just, the seat. It's a sad division, to be honest. It really it is a sad division. And the Cowboys the won the night big. The one, Cowboys did win the night big. The uh, Giants are currently <laughs> at top of the division. You know what I mean? But they did. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> I'm, not fade. I'm fading fast. I'm fading but, fast. But uh, the other thing is, I believe the last game of the season, like the, just, the is Giants. That what we're calling it the third one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I'm scratching down the, there, uh, I'm really, I'm, I'm the one that should be in the poor movies. The, anyway, go the, ahead. The Giants uh, in Dallas play the last game of the season, <laughs> which will be an interesting matchup. Yeah, because those are probably going to be the two teams, I guess, fighting for the division. Absolutely. Years. Now, in the wild card right now, as it stands, you've got Atlanta at nine and five, and you've got Detroit at eight and five. Atlanta because they played Thursday night, sitting at nine and five, and and teams that are still in there: Chicago, Dallas, Seattle, and Arizona. Now, on the AFC side, Houston is ten and three. Now, I'm going to tell you what: Houston, everybody's talking about the Broncos and Tebow and Green Bay, but fucking Houston. That's a it's, it's a great and story, three, I mean, man. And they've Andre Johnson's missed numerous games. Yeah, they're playing with a quarterback who went to North Carolina, was successful there. But right. I mean, he's not really even. They a real lost quarterback. their first string. They lost their second string yeah. quarterback. Now they got the third string quarterback in, who nobody knew. He's the first quarterback to ever start from North Carolina. I mean, it's unbelievable. And they're sitting at ten and three and on top of the uh, AFC, and they've already won the division. Um, Baltimore's is um, is sitting at the top of the uh, North. And they've still got they've got the tiebreak over Pittsburgh if they wind up you know wind up with the same uh, record, but who knows what will happen there? New England has already won the AFC East, and uh, Denver is uh, already won the AFC West. Yeah, that's the, what's fucking crazy. And I that, didn't realize that's that. the big game this week that everybody yeah, wanted for it was the New England Denver game. NBC wanted to put it as the Sunday night game, but mm -hmm. um, it was held back. CBS is gonna you know it's gonna be airing at four, but there was a little bit of a controversy there because everybody wanted that primetime story. Now, they, with that said, and now that we're done talking about playoff football, let's mm -hmm. talk about the real story in the NFL. Okay. What percentage chance do you give Tim Tebow playing at home versus Tom Brady? Tom Brady is 1-5 in, in Denver. Wow, I didn't know that. Tom Brady has a 1-5 in five record playing in Denver. I, 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 give, I give the Broncos a very good chance. Because their defense is nasty as Their shit. defense is nasty as and New shit. England has no defense. They, and nasty. they give up. They, I, to the point where I started Tebow. Yeah, yeah. I, I started Tim Tebow because their secondary is so weak. And the other thing is, is that 
watching the, how the Redskins played against the, you know, I mean the right, Redskins. They put up, they put up big numbers. Twenty-seven points. I Grossman think. put yeah. up big numbers. Who? People are starting Grossman in fantasy. I don't know why they're starting him in fantasy because it's just I one do week it playing this the week. Patriots. But uh, I give Tebow good chances. Yeah, well, put it this way: if the Patriots, I give the Broncos to good me, chances. if the Patriots aren't up two touchdowns going in the fourth quarter. That's Tebow time. Shit. Because Tebow and the higher power will win that the game. The child exactly. of baby Jesus, down by 28 with 30 seconds to go, will find a way to win. Oh, that's right. Yeah, fuck You're absolutely. playing against a higher power, yeah, man. No Can shit we off. get a moment of silence? For what, Tim Tebow? No, for Pat Militich. No, for Pat Militich, okay. All right.